dear brothers and sisters in Islam, of the most fundamental of all fundamentals of our religion is that the purpose of this life is to save ourselves from the punishment of the Akhirah and to enter into Jannat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah Himself says in the Quran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whoever manages to save himself from the fire of hell and is caused to enter Jannah, that is the one that has truly achieved success. So the real success is to be saved from the ultimate punishment, which is Jahannam, and to enter the ultimate reward, which is Jannah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, one of the greatest scholars that our tradition has ever seen, has extracted from the Quran and Sunnah the 10 methods, the 10 mechanisms that can be used to have our sins gotten rid of and to save ourselves from Jahannam. So there are 10 methods, there are 10 mechanisms and ways that can avert from us the fire of hell and allow us to enter Jannah and cause our sins to be forgiven. Number one is the concept of Tawbah of the ways we cause Jahannam to be averted away, and of the ways we cause our sins to be forgiven, is the concept of Tawbah. And Tawbah is an action of the heart. Repentance is a spiritual frame of mind. It is an internal act. And it means that we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because a sin distances us from Allah. A sin puts distance between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does Tawbah do? Tawbah literally means to return to. Taba yatubu means to come back to. So Tawbah is to come back to Allah after the sin has been done. And Tawbah is obligatory on each and every Muslim every single day of his or her life. And Tawbah is the most effective mechanism for having our sins forgiven. And what makes it even more powerful, that no sin can withstand Tawbah. Tawbah forgives every sin. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah can forgive all sins. But how? وَأَنِيبُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُ لَهُ Turn to your Lord, submit to Him through the concept of Tawbah. And in fact, some of our scholars have said that the concept of Tawbah is one of the wisdoms why Allah created us. Think about this. When the angels asked, why would you create an inferior species? Why would you create a species that is bloodthirsty, killing, going to war? Why would you do that? We are sinless. We don't commit any sins. We are perfect. We praise you constantly, day and night. We don't sleep, we don't get tired. We never forget. Why would you do this? And Allah says, I know what you do not know. In the a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. And some of our mufassirun have remarked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to manifest His merciful side as well. The fact that He forgives, the fact that He accepts the repentance of the sinner, and the angels do not sin, and the angels do not ask for forgiveness, and the angels do not need tawbah. So who needs tawbah? We need tawbah. Number two is related to it. It is linked with it, but it is different. It is linked, but it is different. And that is istighfar. Istighfar. Istighfar is the verbal act of tawbah. Istighfar is the tawbah that is manifested on the tongue. So the difference between istighfar and tawbah, tawbah is a state of the heart. It is a psychological frame of mind. Uh, and istighfar is manifesting that tawbah upon the tongue. And that is by requesting Allah to forgive you. And that is done by many ways. And the most common is to say, Astaghfirullah. But there are other ways as well. Any verbal request to Allah to forgive the sin. And it is to say, Astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah. I have committed a sin, O oh Allah, forgive me. Ya Ghaffar, irfirni. Ya Rahman, irhamni. Ya Tawwab, tub alayya. This is istighfar. Even when you say tawbah and you say, Ya Tawwab, tub alayya. This is in fact istighfar. Because the tongue is what does istighfar. And our Prophet said, Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, that, Wallahi inni la atubu ila Allah wa astaghfirullah 
في كل يوم أكثر من مئة مرة. Every single day I repent to Allah and I say astaghfirullah. So notice tawbah and istighfar they are different but they are linked. Inni la atubu wa astaghfir. I do tawbah and I say istighfar every day at least a hundred times. So if this is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then where do I stand? Where do you stand? So of the ten ways, number two now. We should make it a habit, inculcate into our lifestyle. Every day, every night, we should make it a habit to keep on uttering, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Allah says to the angels, He calls them and He says, I am calling you to witness, to testify that I have forgiven this habitual sinner, slave of mine. He's always committing sins. I have forgiven him. Why? Because he recognizes that he has a Lord whom he has transgressed against, but who forgives sins. So because the servant recognizes who Allah is, and he recognizes how sinful he is, and he recognizes my only hope is istighfar, my only hope is Allah's rahmah. So because of that, Allah has forgiven him. Number three, what else will avert us from Jahannam? Good deeds. Good deeds. Our good deeds expiate our evil deeds. Our good deeds dissolve, dissipate our evil deeds. Once a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was in a very penitent state, very sorry state. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have committed a major sin. I have committed, I've done an evil deed. I have seduced a woman and I kissed her, kissed a woman. He didn't go beyond this, he kissed her. So the Prophet ﷺ said nothing to him. Then the time for salah came and they prayed. And the man went away thinking that there was nothing he can do to get his sin forgiven. Uh, the person called the man back and he said, Oh, so and so, didn't you come to the masjid and pray with us? And he said, Yes, I did. Don't you know that Allah says in the Quran, Innal hasanati yudhibna sayyat. Doing good deeds causes evil deeds to go away. In other words, you have repented, you are clearly guilty, you have come in a sorry state, you are making istighfar to Allah, now you have walked to the masjid, you have prayed with us, this good deed will forgive your evil deed. So hasanat yudhibna sayyat. And we all know when we do wudu, the evil deeds fall from our hands. When we pray, our Prophet ﷺ said, it is like the one who washes five times a day, he takes a bath, he takes a shower. Do you think anything will be left on him? They said, no. So they said, this is the example of the one who prays five times a day, no sin is left on him. Ramadan to one Ramadan forgives everything in between. The Hajj causes you to come back as if your mother has given birth to you, as clean, as pure as a newborn baby. And on and on and on. Sadaqa brings about Allah's forgiveness. Sadaqa dissolves Allah's anger. Sadaqa causes Allah's anger to disappear. So every good deed causes some of your evil, some of your harm to dissipate away. So that's number three. Number four, the dua and istighfar of other believers for you. What else causes forgiveness? What else saves you from Jahannam? When other people make dua for you, especially by name, but even generic dua, because all believers are commanded by Allah to seek forgiveness for all other believers. A part of our culture, our Islamic culture, is we ask Allah, Allahumma gfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat, wal muslimina wal muslimat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. We ask Allah's forgiveness for all the believers. So our hope is when we go away, our hope is when we're gone, the people who ask Allah's forgiveness for all believers, some of it inshallah will come to us as well. We cannot rely on that. But it is a hope and it is one of the ways of kafara, one of the ways of protection of Jahannam and especially a dua by name, especially a dua by name. And that is why we are encouraged to seek forgiveness for others because when we do it for others, then inshallah when we are gone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause people to do it for us as well. And how stingy we are brothers and sisters that we don't even want to raise our hands up to Allah and ask Allah to bless other people, ask Allah to protect other people, ask Allah to forgive other people. Don't we know that when we do it, an angel will say, Ameen and may you get the same as we seek forgiveness for others, 
Allah will create people that will seek forgiveness for us. So point number four, dua and istighfar from the other believers. Point number five, the calamities and the trials and tribulations and the pain and the suffering and the anguish and the grief that every one of us faces throughout our lives of the mercy of Allah. And he did not have to do this, but of the mercy of Allah is that every physical or emotional pain that we suffer. If we have faith in Allah and we have sabr and yaqeen, that pain will dissolve our sins as well. As our Prophet ﷺ said, no servant of Allah is afflicted with ham or gham, nasab or ta'ab. No suffering, nor anguish, nor anxiety. The pain of debt, the pain of family, the pain of suffering. Never is an abd afflicted with any anxiety, any pain, any anguish, any grief. Except that Allah will make that pain and anxiety and grief a kafara for his sins. And that is why brothers and sisters, when a believer is tested with pain and suffering, in fact, the believer at one level embraces it. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody likes pain. But when the believer is tested, one side of him appreciates the testing. And he or she understands, Allah is testing me so that my sins may be forgiven and I may come on the day of judgment with no sins. So this is point number five. Point number six. And this is one that is not desirable. We don't want it. In fact, we seek refuge of Allah against it. But there will be people that this point and the next point will actually act as a factor to save them from Jahannam. So it is better than Jahannam, even though it is not good. Point number six is the adab of the Qabr. And we seek Allah's refuge. We don't want adab al-Qabr. We want tawbah, we want istighfar. We understand life is going to be difficult. We don't want it, but we understand it's a part of life. But adab al-qabr, no, we do not want it. But there will be people, they are major sinners. They deserve Jahannam, but Allah will punish them in the grave so that they do not go to Jahannam. So the punishment of the grave will become their punishment, even though they do not know when they're being punished, that that is the case. And they think the next step is Jahannam. They think the next step is Jahannam. But the punishment of the grave will act as a kafara for the actual punishment of Jahannam. And of course, the goal is to save ourselves from that punishment and the punishment of Jahannam. So this is point number six. And point number seven, which is also something we want to avoid. We do not want this is the punishments and trials on the Day of Judgment. Because the Day of Judgment will not be easy, except for those whom Allah has made it easy for. Some of the Muslims, their sins are many. They deserve worse punishment. But Allah will use the suffering of Qiyamah to forgive them the suffering of Jahannam. Number eight, are the good deeds that are gifted to the deceased by the living. This also forgives our sins. The good deeds gifted by the living after we have gone away from this world. So a son of ours makes dua for us. A daughter reads Quran and gives it to us. A relative makes dua. A friend remembers us and gives charity in our name because we have benefited. So the more people we benefit when we're alive, the more they will think of us when we are dead. We all know the famous hadith that when a person dies, his amal cuts off, except for sadaqa jariya, waladun salih, and yad'u la, knowledge that he benefited others by. So we need to maximize spreading our benefit to others, so that when we're gone, people remember, oh, he gave me a loan that day. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive him. That one word, you do not know how it will help you when you most need it. When you most need it, that word might help you and cause a major sin of yours to be forgiven. You gave charity to the orphan and the orphan grows up and he remembers, Oh Allah, whoever helped me, whoever financed me, make his grave a vast place. That dua coming from the qalb of the yateem, you do not know what will happen. You built a masjid. You financed whatever, all of this will come back and benefit you when you need it the most. 
And there is a famous hadith that a person will be rising in his qabr and he will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, where are these good deeds coming from? Well, how am I rising up, getting higher and higher? And Allah will say, this is the dua of your son after you. This is the dua of your children after you. So how will this happen when you raise your children to remember you? When you raise your children as good Muslims, then the dua will come back. So this is number eight. Number nine is the intercession of the one who has been given the ultimate intercession of the human beings. And that is our Habib and Mustafa, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Shafa'a of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot know if we're going to get it. But our dua is, Oh Allah, make me amongst those whom the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes Shafa'a for. That Shafa'a, whoever gets it, is going to Jannah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that shafa'a. And after the adhan, what dua do we make? Allahumma rabba hadihi da'wat al-tamma wa salat al-qa'ima. Aati Muhammadan al-wasilata wal-fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmoodan al-lidhi wa'adda. The maqam al-mahmood is the maqam of shafa'a. And our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever makes this dua sincerely from the heart, then I shall be his shafi' on the Day of Judgment. So that is why we make dua to Allah that, Oh Allah, make us of those whom the shafa'a of the Prophet reaches. This is number nine. And number 10, and the last of them, and definitely not the least of them, is the pure, undeserved rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives to whomever He chooses. Because there will be many, many, many people beyond count who deserve Jahannam. But Allah's mercy wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah's mercy encompasses everything. Our Prophet said, when Allah created the creation, He divided mercy into 100 parts. And one part He blessed this dunya in. And that is why people are merciful to another. And the mother animal will be merciful to its child. All the mercy of humanity, of the khalq, from the beginning of time up until the end of time is one. And our Prophet ﷺ said, and Allah has stored 99 to use on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That is Allah's Rahmah. We don't know who it will come to, but we ask Allah. We make dua to Allah, the pure Rahmah of Allah. We don't deserve it. We haven't earned it, but Allah is Rahman, Allah is Rahim, Allah is the one who forgives, and Allah is the one who grants, even though we do not deserve it. All we can do is to strive, to try, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the 10 ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are saved from Jahannam and enter Jannah. Barakallah wa rakum fi Qur'an al-Azim wa naf'ani wa iyaakum bima fihim ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah al-Azim li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimi kun dhammin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafoor al-Rahim.